Hi, everybody. I'm James Duke Mason, and this is my dad, Morgan Mason. Hello. And we are live on the official GoGo's account. We're so excited to have a conversation with Liz Owen from P Flag and with my mom, Belinda Carlisle, who actually is in the same building, but is doing um, or doing the conversation from her Instagram account so we can have um, her followers join the conversation as well. So with that, I am going to first add P Flag, if I can find them here. Ooh. One second, let me see. My mom has sent a request. So let's, why not? It says, I think it's connecting. Oh, there's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so we are talking to you from the official GoGo's account. <laughs> hi. I, I, uh, let hi me there. see if P Flag, P Flag just sent me a request too. So let's. Connect them. This never works yeah. properly for me. I don't know why, but anyway. Hold on. You get half my face. On. I think half is enough, right? Yeah, you look great. Okay. Look great. I think Liz is joining right now. So great. It's Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for, for uh, agreeing to participate with all of us. Hi, Jason. I think um, Liz is coming on. Let me send her a request again if it didn't work. Hold on, P flag. Okay, I'm sending it again. Hold on, send them an invite. I'm so proud to have my mom and dad who are very supportive. There we the are. Hi, Liz. How are you? Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. So excited to be here. And I should let you know that I have an unexpected special guest with me oh. today. <laughs> she was demanding attention. She loves to celebrate pride. So she's very happy to celebrate pride quietly from my lap. So, so sweet. what's her name? This is Nikki making Nikki? her Instagram oh live debut along with Hi, Nikki. Nikki with an N. So cute. So sweet. She's so like, sweet. what am I doing on camera? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> Something no, we all yeah, agree on. Yeah, we're, excited. we're so. Um, I was just saying, like how. Hi, Gidget. How happy I am to have my mom. It's the first time my dad's done anything public, you know, in terms of interviews or whatever. So I mean, like, very happy to do it. Very proud to do it. Well, really. I really appreciate you all doing this today. The takeover today was amazing and generous and lovely and awesome and, you know. Uh, as you mentioned, I work with PFLAG National. Um, we are, for those who don't know, we are the first and largest organization for parents and families and allies of lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer, plus, 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 plus people. Um, and we were founded in 1973 by an amazing mom of a gay son who saw the way he was harmed by discrimination and harassment and violence. And she took to the street with a homemade sign in New York, marching in 1972 at a time when uh, parents marching proudly for a gay child was really unheard of. Um, and at the end of this parade route, it was the Christopher Street Liberation Day March in June of 1972. Um, and at the end of this route, it's funny, she had Dr. Benjamin Spock was marching behind her and all of these people were cheering and she thought, oh yeah, Dr. Spock is behind me. And they got <laughs> to the end of the route and she discovered they were actually all cheering for her. And oh, that's so, that's so great. It was so cool. And they swarmed her and said, would you please talk to my mom? And nine months later, uh, P Flag was born. And we've been around now. 2023 will be our 50th anniversary wow. year. Wow. Yes. <laughs> um, and now we've got over 400 chapters in all 50 states in DC, Puerto Rico. Um, we even have a, a chapter on a military base in Germany. Um, and wow. of course, P Flag organizations and PFLAG like organizations in countries around the world. Um, and it's this incredible movement of parents like you with their LGBTQ kids providing support, education and advocacy to their kids. <laughs> so um, I know I don't know that a lot of people know your 
PFLAG story, I've been trying to avoid using the word journey this pride. I hear that the word journey is overused. <laughs> so okay. we're going to try not to use the word. I'm going to try not to use the word journey. Um, but your story, everyone has their PFLAG story. And I, I, I would love to hear it from, from each of you. Well, for me, you know, it started for me because um, when I was 14, I think it's like summer of 2006, I was living in France, um, which is where I lived with my parents and went to school. And, you know, I was 14 years old. And even though, you know, I'd, I'd known how I felt for a long time, I was really sort of trying to figure out how to express it, you know, and, and trying to fight, find the right words and trying to, you know, even coming from a super supportive, super progressive, you know, family like mine, which, you know, both of my parents have had gay friends their whole lives, basically. Um, and yet I still was kind of scared, like, how do I, how do I say this? Like, what is the right thing to say? I don't want to upset them or, so I, I was searching, I remember actually literally sitting at a table like this, dining room table, searching for different resources, you know, different websites with, you know, information. And I remember stumbling on PFLAG's website, and um, I remember, I think they had resources for both parents, but also for um, LGBTQ uh, people themselves. And I went on there, and I remember specifically one comment, which was, or one line, which resonated with me, which was, you know, your sexuality isn't your only defining characteristic that you know, basically that's an important to tell people, you know, uh, that you're still the same person that you were to yesterday, you know, that, um, that you're still, you know, it's just one important, but one very, one part of who you are and that, you know, the people around you shouldn't feel like, oh, all of a sudden things have changed, you know, completely and your relationship's going to be different. So, um, you know, that resonated with me. And uh, I remember taking what I'd read on the website you know, uh, telling my mom, then telling my dad. And, you know, I actually, I'd never asked them if they even sort of, they knew PFLAG before that time. But I remember, you know, once I came out and I said, hey, you know, there's this website and this organization that you guys should, you know, if, if you want to, that you should take a look at. And I think for both of them, um, you know, I think PFLAG, I, I know that PFLAG was a really important resource for me. But I think, I'm sure if I know for them, it was um, as well, you know. I don't know if, yeah. you wanted, if you wanted yeah, to Yeah, I would love to hear from your, from your <laughs> parents about sort of their, you know, every story has its own, you know, perception. There's the thing that happened and then how everybody else experiences it. So Well, yeah. maybe, maybe if you guys want to talk about, you know, just generally the coming out thing and like how, you know, how you you know, dealt with that or how you, uh, what your process was like, mom? Mom, okay, mom. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I think I'm you know, asking Mr. Mason on the other side of the camera that we always kind of knew that he was possibly, you know, we had a gay child and there were, you know, little sort of hints along the way, you know, when he was growing up and. <laughs> he had more there. dresses than Don't she worry. did. <laughs> It's actually true. Yeah, That's kind of true. Here and there. Um, so we, you know, so we always kind of figured that he probably we had a gay child, which to us is no big deal. I mean, I've had gay and lesbian friends all my life, you know, and and so is my husband. So um, I remember um, Duke and I were out on a mother son outing uh, at a local lake when you're living in France and. And I was driving and he said, I have, to, I have something to tell you. And I said, well, tell me. And he, he just started like, no, no, no. And his lip was quivering. And I knew it was something. And he said, I like boys. And I went, oh, <laughs> 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 over to the side of the road. Um, well, I didn't, you know, I pulled over because it was, you know, even though I'm completely, you know, gay friendly, whatever. When your child is gay, it's a different thing. I mean, you wonder what kind of world he's going to have to to face, and and um, you know, it, all sorts of things went through my mind. And I, even though it was it was it wasn't a shock, but it was a shock. So I, you know, and I'll let my, my husband talk, but 
I had a real, I told my son not, you know, Dookie to, to, to not really say anything to my husband, you know, to Miss, Mr. Mason right now. Um, let me sort of process it and we can figure out how we're going to, um, we're, you know, we're going to tell him. So, I mean, it took about a month. It was, it was, you know, because I guess, you know, having an only son, it sort of defines one's masculinity, maybe, you know, that was mm -hmm. kind of what I was thinking. So it took about a month. And, and uh, when I finally, you know, I went to my therapist to sort of figure out how to approach the subject, because I, I was nervous. I mean, I was and um, I finally got the nerve up a month later, and I remember I, took, I dropped him off at the bus stop for school, and I came up and I said, I have something to tell you. Um, Dookie likes boys. <laughs> and he said, what? And then I'll turn it over to, <laughs> to you. Because <laughs> it, was, it, was, um, it was an intense period to, um, for all of us, you know, I think. And, and I'll, let, I'll let my husband speak. Well, for me, obviously, um, it never was an issue. It wasn't a problem for, for me personally. I was concerned about him because of his ambitions. And his ambitions have been uh, very uh, focused on politics and uh, how he wanted to be, you know, how, how, what he wanted for his career. And this is, it's kind of hard to even imagine because I remember driving into school and talking about this after he came out at school and, you know, told everybody. And by the way, you know, in the, in where we were living in France, there was no such thing as an LGBTQ uh, club or organization. I mean, there was nothing. And of course, you know, it being sort of a Latin country and a lot of people, you know, there, there's, there was no such thing as, you know, an out student at the school. It never happened. So it was incredibly courageous of him to out himself at, you know, uh, in front of all of the other kids, basically, and then was elected school president after that. So it, it worked. <laughs> Paving you know? the way for Pete Buttigieg, I think. You were first <laughs> well, in fact, as a nominee. So in a weird a way. Because candidate. He, he was, I was just concerned because that's what I, my point really being that 15 years ago or whatever it was, it was like, you can't run for office or it'd be extremely difficult if you were, you know, try and be an American politician and be openly gay. Now, Absolutely. of course, it seems ridiculous to even say that, but it shows you how far we've come in a short time. But at the time, it was like, do you realize, just, you know, realize what you're going to be up against in this case. And of course, now I'm thrilled to say that it's, <laughs> it hasn't been a problem at all. And on the contrary, it's been a bully pulpit in a way for him. And the best part for P flag, from my point of view, from the very beginning, was that it gave him a community because he didn't have a local community, and so he felt embraced and supported from the get go, which obviously is a big part of what you do. And it, you know, obviously really is emotional for me to think about the kids that don't have that support or the resource, you know, whether they get it from their family or not. At least if they have a community where they can feel supported and whether that's online or in person. And of course I'm thrilled for him because he has WeHo and that's another incredibly supportive community. So oh yeah, you know, I feel like he's loved and safe and you know, feels part of a bigger, uh, a bigger community. So for that particularly, I thank you guys for uh, what you yeah. did for him and for us, you know, after the fact. Well, now I know what he was doing all night on his computer. I'd go up to his bedroom. What are you doing? It's not that you should be sleeping. <laughs> well, I mean, it's so, it's so true that, you know, and it's, and it's, and it applies to both the people themselves, the, the LGBTQ people themselves, but also to their friends and family, you know, especially when you live, okay, I mean, I lived in France, which granted, you know, in many ways, that's a very progressive country, but in a way you could make a very, you know, very easy comparison between the sort of place we were living and middle America or places that are very provincial and sort of, you know, not like very urban or sort of progressive at all, like very kind of more conservative, culturally conservative area. Um, and so, especially back, as my dad said, 15 years ago, 
it was a very different world even 50 years ago and 15 years ago and um so that's really all i had i mean and, and then for, for a lot of people that's all they have they either have the virtual you know information or community and or you know these uh chapters in these areas you know like my, my mom and i did the um talk in bakersfield with p flag uh so six seven years ago that's we did where we it met. in part because absolutely <laughs> because we knew that that was an area because my grandparents my mom's parents lived there um you know her, a lot of her family we knew that this is an area that you know is very culturally conservative and we felt like you know this is an area that could really you know use you know it's important to have the especially important to have these types of conversations in areas where people feel might feel uh, more isolated and and uh alone and things haven't i mean you know you you i'm so glad that you mentioned this a couple of things first you know that in many places, things are not as different from 15 years ago or 20 years ago, you know, and, you know, that's the importance of PFLAG in those areas being a, we do, an, we do a lot of advocacy, but we're nonpartisan. And one of the biggest things we do is meet people where they are to have challenging conversations, to have all, it's why you'll never hear us. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the world, but we don't talk about homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, it doesn't mean there isn't a lot of hatred and it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means we know that in order to move people along and get them to open their hearts and minds, there are certain words that will shut down conversation as opposed yeah. to being able to provide education and understand where does the fear of this incredible community come from? How do we unpack fear, meet fear with facts and education and really explain so people can understand and release that fear and come to embrace and accept because the truth is the data shows that PFLAG's model works. The harm, the, the difference that just one affirming family member makes in the life of an LGBTQ people, it cuts some levels of harm by like 80%. Um, it's truly unbelievable. So, and then the other thing I wanna ask you both about is, um, you know, you mentioned, and it's really true, you know, that you were, you were allies before your child came out. But right. you also both talked about that it really is, and we hear this from millions of parents, it's different when it's your own child, not that you're not affirming, but it's, there, there's, some, there's some difference there. I would love to hear a little bit more about that because it's, it's a truth we have heard from so many parents. Yeah, I mean, um... I, you know, I, like I said, I was shocked, but not shocked. It wasn't that much of a surprise. Um, you know, and, and I, and I go through all the cliches in my head, which, you know, you probably hear about, was it something I did? Was it something I said? You know, all that. And, and, and I know, you know, I know deep inside that, you know, born gay you know he was born gay I mean that's just you know we were growing up so but still it's all like those cliches that you hate hearing about and you hate coming out of people's mouths still run around in your head and and I can't lie about that um but I mean since, since I was like 10 I've had gay friends so um but I was just scared I was scared for him I was scared for the world and like he said a you know, we've come a long way in 15 years since he's come out. So, um, and there's still a long ways to go, but we're getting there. And um, yeah, I mean, that's just how I felt. And then with Morgan. Yeah, honestly, you know, I, I grew up in a family with, you know, we were extremely uh, liberal and we, you know, my both my parents were in the entertainment business and we had I mean, I would say 50% of our friends were, if not openly gay, they were openly gay to us, at least. And there was certainly from the time I was five years old, I was never, you know, I was not, never surprised to see two guys together or two women together in social situation. And, you know, I knew what the lay of the land was because my mother was very clear to me, like, you know, she's acting as though she's his girlfriend you know so i understood the whole game that was being played and uh from a very early age so i wasn't you know honestly even though i was, when i say i was surprised when he wrote me the most beautiful letter which i still obviously 
treasure. I can't read it too often because it makes me cry, but it was a really beautiful letter. And um, from that instant, you know, all I cared about was how difficult would this potentially make his ambitions? And I knew his ambitions were, you know, he was laser focused from nine about what he wanted to do with his life. And there was never really any, you know, discussion no matter how much advice I might have wanted to give. And, you know, it wasn't going to work. So the only thing I cared about was that he, at that moment, it seemed like that might somehow hurt his ambitions. And I only wanted him to know that, you know, you have to be aware of that and you're going to have to deal with it, which of course he has dealt with it very well and we have come a long way. So he did the right thing and uh, I'm proud of him the way he did it. He took a lot of guts to do what he did in the place where he did it. You know, he gave a speech to the student body, you know, at lunchtime. Before, before and, he told Morgan. What? So everybody <laughs> in the village, everybody in the school, everybody knew. Well, not literally for the except entire except school. Except I did it in front of him. some of my class, but still, I literally yeah, stood up on that. Like, huh? Once Everybody you do did. that, it's... Yeah. I like, it was so funny. I saw some, like, I don't know what Instagram account it was, but recently it was like, for Pride Month, tell us your coming out story in the comments. And I left a comment saying, made a speech in front of my class, <laughs> uh, which, you know, and like, I was like a total political speech. Like, I literally, like, wrote, I was like, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there. like, it was very uh, <laughs> formal. But, um, and, uh, you know, but... And the point I was going to make also was, you know, I I always knew like okay, granted, you know, it did. Their, you know, we they both went through their own, you know, sort of experience in terms of coming to terms with the news and you know and I but you know and, and then I was a little afraid just because you know, you really don't know what's going to happen you know when you come out it's and that's sort of a thing once you do it you know there's no going back you want to do it the right way you want to make sure you're saying all the right things. So, but you know, that's the thing, like even for me, someone who knew deep down that it was, I just knew it was this not even a, it was a given that no matter how bad it could get, it was never, I was not like I was never ever gonna be thrown out of the house. Like I knew that, I knew right. that, I knew that, I knew they had gay friends. I grew up around gay people, you know, my mom's and my mom's best friends. I knew that my dad grew up around gay people. So, but even for me, it was a scary sort of, uncertain things so like in terms of the consequences so you know i can only imagine for kids out there who you know really who don't have that sort of assurance and you know who very often do end up getting thrown out of the house or end up committing suicide or attempting suicide you know if it's if it was that hard for me i can't imagine or i can't imagine you know as i i've heard stories and i know people who've been through far worse and far more difficult experiences. Um, so yeah. But even that's that why it's... makes me think is just to, totally maybe off the subject, but it's such an experience too, because for me, because occasionally in the world I was in, in particularly in France, occasionally someone would make a remark, not knowing that I had a gay son and would say, you know, a typical, you know, annoying joke in their way, in their mind, using a, a slur. And uh, I mean, it was so powerful to me and it hurt me so much to, you know, now I could put myself in the place of what these kids and what people go through in the person, you know, I was, it was really a hit home when you say it's different when it's your kid. That really, you know, where are those kinds of things as a man, you grow up with people saying stupid things and you just kind of let it slide. But wow, it, my, my view changed really fast. And those people quickly, those few people, it was only a few, but they quickly became no longer acquaintances or friends. And you just, you start to realize how much, you know, how much gay people have to deal with, uh, you know, even in subtext, but uh, or unconsciously people say stupid things. So that made me even a bigger ally. <laughs> I was and that's what we one. tell <laughs> folks, you know, when you, when you hear those kinds of remarks, if you hear a joke that, you know, has bisexual, transgender, gay, lesbian people at the heart of a joke, you know, to be able to speak up and say something, you know, is, it's powerful. You know, we tell people, you know, to, to be an ally isn't an identity, it's an action. It is how you move in the world 
in support. It is how you put your words and your body in the way of the queer people that you love and recognize, you know, the constant, you know, threat of harm that they live under, whether it is from discrimination, harassment, violence, and, you know, to, to, to ally is to, to, to do that with words and with deed. And, you know, to see parents do it is, is really remarkable and so powerful um, still, I think, to this, even now, you know, which is why I think back to Jean Manford and to see someone do that in 1972, how Fantastic. powerful that must have been. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I recognize, I know that we only have five minutes left, unfortunately, so, um, I, I want to let folks know, first of all, um, that uh, this discrimination I keep talking about, um, that many people don't know that LGBTQ plus people still do not have federal protections from discrimination in the workplace and, and in housing and credit and other places. And the Equality Act, which is a piece of federal legislation that would make that type of discrimination illegal under federal law, it would also expand protections for women, for people of color, uh, for people of faith um, is really important. And I would uh, hope that your followers and folks who believe in that no one should be discriminated against because of who they are, who they love, uh, check out pflag.org slash Equality Act uh, to learn more. Call your senators. We really wanted to come to a vote. And especially if you think you, first of all, if your senator is already supporting, call them and thank them those thanks are really important. They're hearing from opponents in the numbers of 10 to one against, and we re I know. And I think a lot of people don't realize that thank you matters, so say thank you. And if, you, if your senator is openly opposed to equality, you know, we have a lot of parents of faith at PFLAG. And I think there are a lot of people who don't recognize that to be a person of faith and a person who loves someone who is LGBTQ or is someone who's LGBTQ, those things are not mutually exclusive. So if you're a person of faith and you believe in the Equality Act and anti-discrimination law, call your senators and tell them that, that you are a person of faith and you also love a queer person and would like them to be able to keep their job. That's important. That's um, so hope, hope it's okay to share that here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. And I have to say, I'm, I'm, you know, I've said this to you before, that, you know, in in, in I was so proud when we were speaking, Duke and I were doing that event in, in Bakersfield. And I just love Pete Flagg so much for being there for him because when he was, you know, afraid about coming out and, and uh, telling us, because it, you know, it, it, he it was brave. And, and I know when he said to me in the car, well, my sexuality doesn't define me, um, you know, I, that was like, that really, I'll never forget that. It was a really emotional moment. And you think back to when, you know, you were a teen, you know, that, you know, marriage wasn't on the table at that time. And yeah. now, you know, for those who want that, you know, you know, there are plenty of queer folks for whom heteronormative relationships are not their thing. And that's not something we advocate for or against. But if you want it, you can have it. And that has been a change, you know. Change. You know, you know, things have really evolved. But, you know, you can get married today. And in, you know, dozens of states, you can still lose your job tomorrow, which is such a shame. But you're right. Our, you know, and this is the same for straight people, too, and cisgender people, too, right? Our sexuality, everyone has a sexual orientation. Everyone has a gender identity. Everyone has a gender expression. It's just that straight people and cisgender people, heteronormative people, we just aren't forced to think about it all the time or talk about it all the time or confront mm -hmm. it all the time because every day is straight pride day. <laughs> so, you know, every yeah. month is straight pride month. You know, I will say my dad and I are, were laughing though because we and I and I said this. I was like, we were at the Grove because you know a big mall here in LA and walking around and like every single storefront had like a rainbow flag in it. And my dad and I were like, I said to my dad, I was like, oh my god, if I were a straight person, even if I were like super supportive, I'd be like, oh my god, like it's everywhere like now, which is you know, which is an example of how. Things are very different from even when I came out 15 years ago. You know, now it's like, you know, how great, it's so great to be able to walk around town with my mom and dad and, you know, be in such a super sort of, uh, especially here in L.A. Yeah. Everybody knows that we're Duke's parents. <laughs> <laughs> That's our claim to fame now. 
The unofficial mayor of West Hollywood. <laughs> I love it. Well, and it's true, right? Rainbows everywhere. And you know, we're yeah. grateful. We have a ton of corporate sponsors and we're really grateful that they put their money where their mouth is and that they're standing up for quality. And that 15 years ago, those dollars didn't matter to anybody now and now they do. Yeah. We also recognize that there are a lot of complicated issues around that. And so we won't, you know, wash over that either. It's not one or the other, it's, it's both. I was I totally, and I know that's why I was about to say, you know, I don't want to, I know people have very strong opinions on this, but for me, whenever I see a, you know, like I have, for instance, I have a pair of Nikes that are like rainbow colored, you know, that were special, uh, special edition from like a few years ago for Pride Month. To me, some people, like, and I get the argument of why, you know, they feel like, oh, it's a, it's a corporatization or whatever, commercialization of, of Pride. To me, anyway, I've always felt like the more public support you know, from companies. We didn't have that support for a long time, you know? So to have companies and corporate sponsors that support PFLAG and other organizations like it that are willing to put themselves behind these causes, I think is, you know, a, a, a great thing, you know? And- well, Yeah, and we're, and we're grateful. Like I said, you know, we have wonderful sponsors and partners and um, who really put their, their money where their mouth is and support everything that we work on, including our advocacy work to do things like stopping anti-trans legislation in dozens of states, hundreds of bills, passing the Equality Act by supporting PFLAG, they support the work that we do there. Um, and since I recognize we are out of time, I do also wanna say that speaking of putting money where your mouth is, we are grateful to all of you because we're doing this spectacular GoGo's giveaway in support of PFLAG. And I wanna make sure people know that if you go to pflag.org slash GoGo's, um, we have a limited edition numbered and signed poster. You'll get a personal video message from Belinda, which is amazing. And then also one of their GoGo's Pride t-shirts and that's all in support of PFLAG. So if you visit pflag.org slash GoGo's, that's going on. Um, I cannot thank you all so much. I know you're all together for the first time in over a year. Yeah, year and a half. Year and um, a half, year and a half, 18 months, yeah, crazy. So Thank Crazy. you for taking the time with me and Nikki, Pride Dog, to, uh, <laughs> to uh, talk with us today. And thank you for letting us take over the, the GoGo's um, account today. It, well, we're all, I mean, we're, everybody and the, all the girls love P, P Flag. And, and uh, I'm sure if they could be on the screen somewhere, they would. Well, but. please send them our, the collective love of 250,000 members of P Flag. All right. All right. Well, thank you for all the work, honestly. Thank you, Liz. So good to talk Happy to you Pride. again. Liz. You too. Happy Pride. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.